Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I have two people that I talk to. Now, one has been on the show before, uh, Linda Edwards, who um, I spoke to about her art career and her family background and how she runs her own studio. And today she brought on one of the people that works with her in her studio and helps her out and helped her through doing online courses. And they also plan on expanding this, but they also do outreach to children, teaching uh, them art and different skills and all kinds of stuff. Her business partner, Kate, one of the teachers there is on the show as well. So I talked to both of them. We talk more about like uh, what Kate's career is and the background that she has and just kind of what they are doing with this, this studio and this, these classes under the name Art and Asanas. And we talk about that and just kind of what they've been up to and what they plan on doing in the future. So here is my interview with Kate and Linda from Art and Asanas starting right now. I'm talking to two of you here, so at, why don't both of you just introduce yourselves to me, start in whichever order you would like. I'm Linda Edwards from Art and Asanas. I am Kay, uh, Kay Carter, um, teaching artist with Art and Asanas, and I also have my own business called Kate Lee Designs. Okay, and so you guys work together. How long have you worked together? Ooh. Well, we've, wor- we've actually worked together for a few years now. We worked at a, a previous studio um, called Painting with a Twist, a franchise. Okay. And that's kind of how we like reconnected, figured out that we're both from the same town, mm-hmm. ironically, and had personal connections. And then when I was leaving um, that studio and she had had her injury, we decided to like pull together and so for the last two years, two years we've now. been doing art and yeah. asanas together. What's the the paint place called that you worked at before? Painting, Painting with a twist. Okay. And what is that? You said it's a franchise, but like, what is it exactly? So they do like paint and sip. So they do two hour classes for adults. They do kids classes. They do kids camps. They mm-hmm. have parties. private parties, things like that. And it's all geared towards like your paint and sip kind of deal. So you left that and then started what you're doing now. And then what is it? So explain, because um, I believe the shutdown had just happened last time we talk to Linda or something like that. And it, it was just the very beginning of it. And nobody was sure what was going to happen. So now that you are open again, let's talk about what it is that you guys do there at Art and Asanas. Like what exactly, what can one expect if they were to go to your website and go, what's this thing they're talking about? When we like got started, you know, it was really, we were, there was still all these uncertainties, right? So we decided to, in the beginning, we did these like, you know, free painting tutorials. Mm -hmm. We did on Facebook for an hour long, create a project. It was really like high energy. I'm like a crazy animated person. So it was a lot of fun. And then we broke it down and we would like tag team it and have it be like the surprise reveal. So every week we would advertise like, oh, what do you think the next, you know, video is going to be? Yeah. What do you mean a surprise reveal? What are you talking about? So we would have, we had this like theme of, we decided since it was like spring, summertime when we finally started getting back into, you know, recording these free videos. Mm -hmm. So every week was like a different themed um, flower painting. For example, the sunflower one. That's our most popular one. The most popular one was the succulent sunflower. So you have me kind of painting in the beginning Mm -hmm. and she's behind me and she's got this huge five foot by five foot canvas behind and it's kind of like two things at once. It was like a whole show. So I'm I'm teaching this step by step tutorial of a sunflower and she's got this crazy big monstrosity like going in the back like we got water guns going with paint spraying mm-hmm. everywhere it's kind of like a pen and teller you know yeah yes. the, the axe and i'd be in the background goofing off uh-huh. photobombing her <laughs> photobombing her paintings yeah yep, yep. <laughs> exactly so that like we really, make it, funny. it was oh, so fun. And that spiraled. So many mm-hmm. people were like, we want more, we want more. So every yeah. week we kind of made it a surprise. Mm-hmm. We'd pick a different flower. We would, you know, switch different off, theme. different theme. And we did that all the way through the fall. Mm-hmm. And then we opened up for a little bit. We had classes. We were doing kids and adult classes weekly. Okay. And 
We added the Zoom class. We added Zoom. So that was like a big hit that for quite a few months. The whole fall and winter, we were doing these virtual Zoom classes. And every week, we'd have a, a different theme or geared towards the holiday or existing projects that we had. So it like kept the momentum going. And it kept us you know, current. Like we were, we were doing things, mm -hmm. even though it wasn't in person how we would like. So there was definitely challenges. It was hard. You know, teach, the check. <laughs> yeah, teaching through a screen is not the same of right. having that personal connection. Yeah, and well, and well, what about uh, when they come to you guys? They have art supplies and things like that to work with. So, how did they prepare ahead of time? Like, was was there some sort of check sheet or something you did to make sure well, that they had the materials that they needed? Yeah, we actually donated a lot. So a lot of kits. Oh. We created kits for the parents yep. and we basically just put stuff by the mailbox and they would come and pick oh, it up. Oh, you would hand every, deliver it? Yeah. yeah, it was nice. And then every week I'd plan out like a whole itinerary kind of thing. Like mm -hmm. I'd send an email out to our parents, existing students. We'd publicize it on the website or on Facebook mm -hmm. and let them know like, okay, for this project, this is what you would need at home. You know, whether it was pencils, markers, paint, if it was watercolor, acrylic, could use a canvas board mm -hmm. um, or paper. Literally, we would give them every option that they could possibly need yeah. for that having that convenience in their home. So they didn't have to stress about needing to go out and buy all these art supplies. Yeah. Okay. And now that Plus, people... Was struggling. What's yeah. that? Everybody was struggling financially. So it didn't yeah. seem fair. We had an abundance of of supplies that we had so many that we were ready to use. Tired. So you're saying like uh, you had them anyway because you were planning on having people in person. So you already had right. the art supply. Okay. So we also had people donate too. We had a lot of oh, okay. people. We had a lot of people donate for us and for the kids. Well, we had the we had this gallery gig for like I think it was like a six month plan right before oh, the that. pandemic hit. We had a, we had signed a contract with a local gallery. And they teach sculpting, kind of sculpture classes, different different mixed media art. Speakeasy Art Gallery. Yeah, Speakeasy Art Gallery in okay. Putin, Jersey. So we kind of collaborated with them. And the first Friday of every month, uh, starting, it was January or February. Yeah, February. And we were doing these classes, these paint and sips, small projects. And we were, like, lined up through the summer. And then, boom, the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. And that, like... We had all this stuff planned, all the supplies, and it's like, what do we do with this now? Right. And do you normally go to different places and set up these uh, at different galleries? Like, okay, you don't have a place that's dedicated to doing them? Yes. Oh, you do? Yeah, we both. do. We have the studio here okay. for Art and Donna. So we teach weekly out of here. So mm -hmm. we were already doing that. Yeah. But we do a lot of private party off-sites events. Yeah. Okay. For like, yeah, it's predominantly off-site, whether it's like, school district related we've got the restaurants. gallery restaurants mm -hmm. um birthday parties yeah. you name it it's a little bit of everything okay and then now with being able to go uh or have people come see the studio in public or going to public events like are you still going to continue to do the things that you've learned from the online version of it from, or is it, is it one of those things where it's like, now we're done doing that because now we can meet no, up. We're, oh, no, we're, we're, we're still, still offering it. it. We're still offering it okay. because we want to reach out to people that can't still get out of the home or, mm -hmm. you know, parents that are too busy or trying to catch up from everything oh. that they've lost right. in the past year. So yeah, we still keep the Zoom and we're gonna keep that option. Yeah, we still have some students yeah. that have held on to that. So they're still yeah. utilizing it. Okay. Because it is still a nice convenience to have for some of these parents and families, yeah. you know? Yeah. Plus right. if they don't feel well, they have that option too. And well, and some of the new yeah. people that we've got don't even live near us. So no. it's great. That's the other we reason that I was asking. Like it's an opportunity to stretch out. out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in, in that's, that's one of the things I worry about with everybody getting, not worry about, but one of the things I see as a missed opportunity is uh, now that things are open again, it's easier just to go, well, I'm going to focus on the local uh, rather than the online. So I'm, I'm curious to see how many people are going to continue to do that uh, and from what they've learned over that time period. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that. It's, it's, it yeah. makes sense. It's one of those things where it's just, I don't know, it seems like a win-win. Um, it's nice to have the option, you know, yeah. because everybody's at a different kind of pace still. Granted, like locally, we're thriving. Mm -hmm. We have such a great community around mm -hmm. us, from word of mouth to 
the events that we do within the community, even through this pandemic, we've we've stayed really involved with mm-hmm. with doing different events. A couple of the restaurant Tree yeah. Tavern, mm-hmm. uh, one of the local restaurants, we've done some things for, which was yeah. great. Yeah, so, the beautiful gardens. We were able to do a little plain air event with them. It was beautiful. And what is like, a plain Bye. air event, by the way? I I remember Jesse had told me that too. Is that just the name of the place, or is it is it a thing? No. Okay. So plein air is a term. It's a French term of painting outdoors. Oh, it is? It is. Yeah. Okay. I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> the old masters. It's an old one, though. But okay. yeah, it's just painting outdoors, and people you know, can set up their canvases and paint the scene there. We could we set up a scene at the mm-hmm. restaurant because right. they but had an outdoor patio. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think it was nice. Halloween, right? We it was right before Halloween. that. Yeah, we all we dressed up because her and I love to like have that that costume bring like a character the theme to it so okay. like the whimsical garden witch and she was, was like a, squirrel. a little squirrel <laughs> and we like designed that. wait you went from <laughs> witch to squirrel <laughs> it was great she we had like if she was like my little like she was my little squirrel okay <laughs> all right it was great and you guys just <laughs> had uh summer classes recently too didn't you you didn't you just wrap yeah. up something we wrapped up yeah, the spring and went a little longer. Oh, yeah. spring thing. Okay, yeah. yeah. Summer, I guess, hasn't even happened yet. We extended I mean, I it a little it. longer because, again, some of these students, they just, like, they're eating it up. They don't, yeah. like, they want to keep being busy. And that's the thing, too, is, like, trying to find stuff to, stuff stuff to, to do. do. So yeah. I was, you know what? Let's keep it going. And yeah. we did. And we got a bunch of new kids to even join other than existing. So I was like... It was bittersweet this Wednesday, kind of yeah. ending it for a little bit. We're taking a, a short intermission mm-hmm. for the month of July, other than private parties. So. We're trying to upgrade our website. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, you know. We're doing, you know, renovating things around here so it'll be more streamlined to have people come for, we want to do Friendship Fridays, right? Yep, that's our new big that's thing we've been advertising. Thing. Friendship yeah, what's Friday. that? Well, it's for your private party booking pleasures, as I I keep liking to call it. So, again, whether it's birthday parties, on-site, we'll come to you. You could do date night. We just did um, a Girl Scout-themed, you know, Friendship Friday kind of thing for, like, a Brownies Girl Scout troop we did on Monday. Um, We have a a couple booked in August um, for, like, Lake Communities. We're doing a Friendship Friday. So, again, it's all kind of paint and sip geared. So It was just a fun name to put to our events and marketing purposes. No, and that's why I was asking because I I, I heard Friendship Fridays, but I was like, but what does that mean? You know, it's... (laughs) Bring a friend. Right. And, you know, how do you do it? Well, how do you do a paint and sip with with uh, Girl Scouts or brownies? You can't really. Well, well that is that. not a job. <laughs> it's paint and sip. Right. I was going to say, we you might want to clarify that. We yeah. bring. Just our Nissan's yeah. Friendship Fridays. That's that. We play games with them. So it's like, it's a nice balance between the kids. And then we have like, we get, can have even more fun with the adults. Yeah. It's, it's a good balance between the two. Okay. And how do you come up with, uh, you customize what you would be doing for each group, correct? Like, how do you yeah. come up with the ideas? Usually sometimes we get a request yeah. on what they like. So, for example, unicorns was one it's of the big. been a real big one. A big win. <laughs> right? Unicorns yeah. are pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're fun. Very magical. So, we'll, you know, either we'll ask the clients what they would like. Or we'll offer, we have a catalog of over a hundred different images, more than that. Yeah, that, that and, and, and a lot of times we get special requests. So mm-hmm. we'll like we'll create, yeah, we'll customize, create the project from scratch. And mm-hmm. and it just adds to like our Rolodex of, of options, things that we have. Yeah. Okay. And do you always, do you go back to certain themes or you have ones like, do you find that a lot of people request the same thing? I mean, like with the unicorns, there's something oh, where it's yeah. just like, these are our popular options. Like, do you just offer those up front or do you just ask people what Typically, they want Typically, yeah, we would do that. Because okay. if, it, if there's like a popular, you know, popular choice, you know, whether it's the unicorns or we have like some flower pieces, we have like picture, um, like portrait kind of styles and or... Lettering. Now, lettering. I was she just going to say, amazing the, the new big wow. thing, we just did um, our last session, I started doing a, a calligraphy 101 so mm-hmm. back to the basics of like first we started with modern calligraphy and then worked our way back to like old english gothic style because uh-huh. when i was there, um i always was drawn to lettering so i took 
every possible calligraphy class you could imagine. So I started like integrating that into our lesson plans. Yeah. How people do like lettering signs and right. wooden packets and you name it. So it's like kind of evolving on its own mm -hmm. and to like what people's interests are now. It's not even just ours. It's but that's a tough one though. That's it's it's some people just hate their handwriting in general. Like then painting oh, handwriting. But, but that that's my yeah. that's my wheelhouse. That's over wheelhouse. Here. Yeah. But that that's what I mean. Is like how do you even industry. right? Yeah. How do you how do you even teach something like that? Like there's a steady hand. There's like it's not just putting pencil to paper. It's it's trying to hold a brush up in front of you and do painting it's or a lot. Um, Yeah. So so how do you yeah. go about something like that? I've learned, you know, with my experience and watching other artists, and really it's it comes down to the group. I really feel like you have to, everybody learns differently. Mm -hmm. Everybody perceives things and interprets things differently. So I kind of gear, the way I would break it down is based upon that person's needs. So it really gets very much individualized. So when we have smaller, more intimate classes, mm -hmm. it's really rewarding to the students because I can give them each almost an individual kind of tutorial and breakdown versus when we have these larger groups, I'll simplify it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if they're asking questions, I'm still able to explain or give that next step and verbalize it in a different, in a different way for them to understand. So it's really me trying to adapt and with, with those participants, how, you know, what they need or how their brain kind of works. Right. I try to get really in tune to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like a science. It really is, you know, cause it's, it is really lettering is so difficult. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's not an easy thing at all. No, it, I used to be really into it and then I wasn't. It's, I was into it until I realized that I, it's something where there's so many, there's so many more better people at it. Is that a sentence? <laughs> that's, that seems like a weird way to put that, but you know what I mean? And it's, it's like, you know, no, it's, I do. yeah. <laughs> Because anytime she gets like a request, she's like, all right, this is yours. Right. I can't do this. Anytime I'm like portrait, I'm like, here you go. Mm -hmm. This is yours. You know, you trade off. Yeah. That's why we have a great team. We do. It's a good, we have a good balance. It's a little bit of everything. Well, and when you guys started this whole thing, let me go back to when you uh, both left the uh, the other place and then started this. Like, how do you just, how, how did this all come to be? How did this even, you, you don't just go, well, I got a place. Okay, cool. I'll meet you there tomorrow. Now we're open. You know, like what was the process in getting started with what you're doing in the first place? I already had the business established out oh, of yeah. my home. Mm -hmm. Okay. But when I worked with her at Painting with a Twist, I kind of just kept my little private classes. The studio that we worked at, unfortunately, closed was down. closing, yeah. Okay. And so that's when I nabbed her up. She was like, <laughs> I need help. You're perfect for this. Yeah. If you need something, like here. And we both just like I wanted to continue this... the kids' classes. Yeah. I didn't want them to, to go like, stagnant, stagnant. kind of get still. And we both have like so much in common and we have good energy. So it just seemed like a really good fit. And kind of just fell into place it just mm -hmm. it just happened organically like yeah. it literally just kind of fell into place and we've basically run with it yeah <laughs> we're just like so we split it up like she, she took over the classes and then I'll do the social media marketing and um now uh we got somebody to do our website yeah. and you know so we just tag team and then when we go to events you know I'll do the DJing and photography she's like behind the scenes and I'm like full in your face like yeah. the full blown action like okay. the party <laughs> what do you mean DJing and photography oh yeah so we don't just paint we bring in the music oh, I yeah. got my little it's iPad. an event it's an event <laughs> And then I like, a, if I have the opportunity, I'll bring my disco light. <laughs> so your we'll disco like, light? Of course. <laughs> you got it in the back seat of your car, you know. <laughs> Trust me, we have all the props. We love to, the costumes. There's always a theme. There's always something yeah. going on. And we love to, like, incorporate every little detail Especially into that the request, theme. Yeah. Oh, yeah, with the request. Because it, I, I feel like, and I, I know she'll agree, is that, it just makes the experience more memorable mm -hmm. and that's where our reputation really holds so yeah. strongly is that we give you exactly what like the expectation how what it what is set you know like mm -hmm. the enthusiasm the service like all the accommodations everything that goes along like we're so invested and involved in that mm -hmm. that it really shows with like the quality of our work. So I feel like that's what keeps us kind of move going in the word of mouth is we, it's just like a full on service. We give you 
full Everything. blown entertainment. And, and it's a party. It is. It right. really is. It could be fun. So that's oh yeah, because we fun. we gotta enjoy it too, you know. Like well, yeah. and that's that's the biggest part. I don't know about you, but I can't paint without music. Oh, I can't. I I have to have music on. I have to. <laughs> I have to have the music. So yeah, that's like that's another ribbon. reason why we DJ. It's like it's more for us too. <laughs> but if you're DJing, how are you painting? Oh, well, that's where I'm. I'm painting. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I'm DJ. She paints. Yeah. I'll I just thought maybe you had one hand over here and one hand over here. Here's, you know. We've done it before. Yeah. We've yeah. Done it those rich places. Okay. <laughs> Like jack of all trades. Yeah, We're just yeah. all over the place. And also we'll ask the clients um, what kind of music they'd like. Because mm -hmm. that sets the tone for them as well and gives gets rid of that stress. We found that, um, you know, that if you're a first-time so painter or even with the kids or adults, you know, they'll, they want to do this, but they have this high expectation of how it should be mm -hmm. and try to get rid of all that garbage out yeah, of them. Because it them puts a lot of loose. pressure. Yeah, it can put too a much lot pressure. of pressure on. Okay. To think about, like, I have to accomplish this painting. But by the time they're done, when we do all our funny stuff mm -hmm. and the music, they're like, oh, wow, that was easier this than I pretty. thought it was going to be. Yeah. Well, that, and that's that's clearly what you want to accomplish. You don't want, yeah. you don't want it to be like homework. It's like, what am I, in school now? No, What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a party. It's fun. It's personalized. It's just good. And then, it, again, like you said, it doesn't make it stressful for us. If we can accommodate making a set playlist... Music's easy. You tell us what you like. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Done. It's easy peasy. You know, you have different like special requests. Boom, we can do that. It's because that's we that's want to give the clients what us. they want. Yeah, it's so yeah. that's fun. the part that's fun for us too. Yeah. It's like we want to please and have them have a good experience. You know, and not. Uh, I would hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, you always think about it. I try to like look at it as if I was the one going for the service. Mm -hmm. You want to get what you, you you want to pay for what you want. You know, like you get mm -hmm. what you pay for. If you have that certain expectation, you want that good service. So it's like I want to entertain them as if mm -hmm. I would want to be entertained. Exactly. So we're keeping that bar pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you find the people? Well, how do you find the people that uh, do you find them, or do they find you? Is it a little bit of both? Like, how how do you hook up with these different clients that you work with? Uh, they found us. I mean, like yeah. I said, the business I already had established here. I did after school programs, mm -hmm. and so I had my little school based kids and some adults. Uh, so that was always going for a handful of years until. She came in, mm -hmm. and then, like, during the pandemic is really when we had the opportunity to, like, reset, yeah. start, and um, get uh, all our ducks in a row. Yeah, we kind of made a game plan. We, yeah. like, you know, got to, like, hit all bullet points. Okay, what do we want to do mm -hmm. with where we're at, you know? How can we maneuver through this pandemic, you know, and still be able to keep the business going? Mm -hmm. And keep a following and thrive. and thrive. Yeah. Keeping the following. And you know, the biggest, the thing that we tried to like stay true to is like the mantra that she created and it's cultivating creativity in our community. Mm -hmm. So we kept trying to do that, whether it was classes for free, you know, donating supplies, offering, the, you know, whatever service still and, and showing people that we're we still care. here. We care, you we know, care. it mm -hmm. was nice. It was a little yeah. saving grace for, I think, Definitely our community, but yeah. others, because a lot of people, we had, um, what was it, in August, mm -hmm. we had um, JCC and NJ, so it's a, a Jewish nonprofit. Okay. They had contacted us because they saw our live videos on Facebook. Oh, fun. Okay. And it was so cool. They saw like five or six of our videos, and they reached out, and they wanted to like integrate us into their like programming. So hmm. we did not one, but two events. We did one over the summer and then I did one in the fall and it was cool. It was all virtual, but all it was Zoom. all Zoom. Yeah. And we created a project and we were able to do this. Oh, this for was, like, I got to oh, yeah, yeah right I was going to say, what was the project? But mm -hmm. I created a Hamsa hand. So mm -hmm. this was the painting and they loved it so much. They immediately, we booked this next yeah, event yeah. for the fall and we had like over 40 people on a Zoom. It was crazy. Nice. It was crazy in like such a high energy way, but it went from, you know, we had 15 people who were interested in it through this organization, like staff, some of their clients, to like full blown, they made it into this huge thing. And it, it was really incredible. It was, they just saw us just from 
Geeks are one of our social media platforms. So it was great. And they, you know, wanted, they, we had it connected through across the country. Oh, and that's one, another new one. That was another project that she customized for Valentine's Day. Which okay. was a huge hit. That was fun. We did a fun little video reel with that. This Our, is the succulent sunflower. One project. of the most oh, okay. popular. Yeah. Just cool. You can't see the glitter. Oh, there's so much glitter. <laughs> Why is there fun. so much glitter? <laughs> we love glitter. We like glitter. We bring it everywhere. Oh. And you know what? We glitter bomb love it. everyone. <laughs> We're like little pixies. I'm sure that that gets mixed results as far as <laughs> it's being glitter bombed. Yeah. It's kind of like, well, you can react one of two ways about this. Um, <laughs> we'll do it outdoors. No, right. <laughs> now, aside from doing this type of stuff, what do you? Uh, what are you guys doing artistically on your own? Uh, what are you making? outside of what's going on in the classes and on the Zoom calls and all that stuff? This one, by the way, is amazing. I've been actually cranking out a lot of stuff. Okay. I, uh, every day, I've been, your bags first. I know. I've been yeah. really, really fortunate. One of the first things I've been doing is, um, I want to say like four years ago, I had started. Um, my daughter, when she was in kindergarten, she, uh, you know, that one of the requirements was sending in these, you know, brown lunch sacks. You know, they had to have a separate one for snack and they had to have a separate one for lunch. So on the first day of school, like, I wrote her name, wrote a little doodle, and then I was like, no, we need to be, like, better. I can do better yeah. with this. I know where this so, is going. <laughs> me, like, I'm like, how can I really make this something bigger and, like, better? And I ended up, like, these parents were definitely, like, hating on me hard because okay. <laughs> every day I would draw like this crazy elaborate in the morning she would get up I'd make breakfast I'd be like what do you want me to draw for you today Letty she'd be like a unicorn a mermaid I do motivational things the whole month of October is like Halloween themed and then like November would be give thanks so like all gratitude motivational things are like Thanksgiving theme then you have December was like all Christmas mm -hmm. and it just evolved into like this every day making all these snack bags um, not doing it as much anymore, but that evolved to, you know, with this pandemic, I got really lucky. I have a couple of clients that were like every month making me pump out commissions. So mm -hmm. hmm. from, I want to say December on, I've cranked out like six to eight pieces, like small and large, multiple canvases of all different things. So, you know, when we were kind of in our lull and planning, I was still labeled. I was cranking out freelance. I was yeah, freelancing yeah. and cranking out all these pieces, which kept me like busy. Okay. You know, I think I was like, what am I going to do with all this time? We're not teaching every week. We're not booking events. Like, mm -hmm. what am I going to do? I'm like in the studio every day painting. Like mm -hmm. it was, it was awesome. It was. I was really lucky for that. So built. I found a. I got a lot of new clients and. They're still asking. They're like, what can we do next? So it's nice. What I kind of stuff were they having you do? So I did like, so one of my clients, she is, um, she's Hindu. She's Indian. She's from India. So I've done a lot of um, Indian inspired pieces. So I did a Buddha, um, my own, I did, I made an own custom kind of Buddha piece. Mm -hmm. I did um, three Hindu women. I did these huge paneled, um, they were like, Three feet by a foot and a half, something like that. Those really beautiful. long, narrow ones. I did okay. three Hindu. Women. Um, what else? You did I that did forest scene. Did oh, I did this landscape. Um, a landscape. I I call I named it tra uh, tranquility, and it was this beautiful photograph she took in the woods. Okay, I was going to say, did you just make up a landscape, or was it based on something? All no, right. she she gave me a photograph that she took, and it was so beautiful. And I recreated this you know, wood scene and it was unbelievable. It was, it was a process. It took quite a few months cause I really like, that's, that's my preference. Like I, I love doing landscape stuff like that mm -hmm. and I'll do a little bit of everything. Um, but I love painting stuff like that. Um, Father's day, you did the fish. She did oh, all these beautiful I did fish. these huge wood, um, these pallets of yeah. wooden pallets and okay. I did, I had clients give me pictures of fish that they caught. And I painted the fish on the pallets. Oh, did that? Boom! Beautiful. They were awesome. They she were added really, this really iridescence good. in them. You could see the color of the scales. Yeah. it was oh. really cool. I, it was like so many layers. I did like all this little stippling, and then mm -hmm. the pearl and the sparkles. And it was lettering. A lot of lettering. <laughs> 
A lot of lettering. <laughs> what kind of paint do you, what, or what medium? There we go. What paint medium are you using? For some reason, I couldn't think of what I should call that. Like, what do you paint with? Um, <laughs> so what kind of uh, paint do you use when you make I paintings? typically use acrylic. Okay. I prefer using acrylic. Um, sometimes I'll use like brush pens that are like water, water based. Oh, I love using the brush pens. Those are fun. They yeah. are so fun. Yeah. Um, you can do so many things with them and they're really blendable, great for mixed media. Okay. You don't need to use them with acrylic. So I've done kind of both. I very rarely use oil just because of the cure time. Yeah. So right. it's typically acrylic. Um, but I'm also, I'm, I started before I started painting, um, I'm, I'm an illustrator, so like I'm mm. constantly drawing and, and lettering, so that's always something. I also started doing um, digital design over the pandemic and doing oh. like local design, so it's like a little bit of everything. Okay, so you're working in vector programs or are you working in Photoshop when you do that? Um, both. Both, so okay. Both, a balance of both. Um, depends on what the client is asking for or right. what they need. Like, what is it going on? You know, is it stickers? Is it clothing apparel? It really depends on, you know, the material that they're using. But yeah, that makes sense. Nice yeah, yeah, I just know that some people really like to lean more in one direction than the other just because they are kind of two different tool sets, like using... Oh, they're, they're totally different. Yeah, and even the so, way that you draw on it is differently, you know, or different. See, like digital design is, is more of a new, a new avenue for me. Yeah. I've always kind of toyed around with it so sometimes photoshop is a lot easier to use versus like the vector platform it, it really depends on what you want to do yeah i'm all i like to get, keep it down to hand like the drawing and the painting is like my basis so right i always try to like gear off of that now when you were taking these these commissions where how were people contacting you about them where were they where were they placing the these orders like how would you fulfill it so it was really funny. One of the one, one of my clients, the one that kept it like real, cause she was like throwing stuff at me, like left, right and sideways. I okay. was like kind of overwhelmed for a moment. I was like, wow. Okay. It was great. She actually, her daughter went to school with my daughter and my daughter went to her one daughter's birthday party. And she was asking about like, Oh, you know, I heard you're a painter, you're an artist. And we got talking about how you know, Linda and I do paint and sip parties. We do kids parties. We do this, yeah. we do that. With, you know, a year later, she contacted me. I thought she was like, just trying to say, hi, how are, how's the family? Right. She goes, no, I'm looking to like do business with you. And I was like, oh, okay. And it just kind of started with that. And then word of mouth, she's referred people to me. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten clients through like what we do, you know, again, just really word of mouth and mm -hmm. Well, then everything. Do you have a website that you do this or two, or it's really the word of mouth? You're just saying people contact you direct. Like, I guess, how do they get a hold of you, or is it only people that word, you're... word of mouth? Well, I have like business cards that I've gone out. Okay. So you know, I want an to... Instagram account. I have. I use Facebook. Instagram. I have a Facebook account for it as well, and it's the Kate Leo Designs. Uh -huh. Um, and back in it was September of 2019. I had done, I did all um, branding and logo design for a friend of mine who has, he has a film company, um, Windus Films, but also he has this company called Hike the World, and it's all geared around mental health, getting people outside, okay. they do festivals, so we had this festival near us, and I did all like the logo design, the branding for the merchandise. Oh, able to showcase a bunch of my pieces so I was handing out people from like our whole tri-state area I was giving out business cards um, I sold like five or six paintings which was really cool so that like kind of ignited a lot because I took when I had my kids when I had my first start nine uh, ten years ago um, I kind of took like a hiatus from painting and drawing for a long time for that that whole duration of time oh, really so like I had stopped really. I worked for BMW for like a lot of years. I was okay. a, I was a, I was an inspector like for financial services. I inspected cars. Like, wow. Okay. So like took a whole kind of break and finally I just like looked at my husband and I'm like I need to do what I love. Like I don't want to do this anymore. I want to get back into it and it kind of just took off running and ever since then I've just yeah whether like from Instagram people have reached out. Uh, word of mouth that mm -hmm. the hiking festival that I helped, um, run it. And some of, my, some of yeah. my clients too. Some of her clients. Stuff, so. so like we've, it's, it's been, yeah. you know, various 
you know, ways that have kind of kept me going, which is nice. You know, next step, we're revamping the website. So mm -hmm. it's just one more area to kind of connect with people. How are you planning out the website? I'm, I'm curious uh, to what you're going to be doing differently or what you've learned or how you're, how you, you said you want to make it more streamlined, like in what sense? Well, from this part, I hired my son's girlfriend to do it. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, because they're going into college. So I figured uh, it's like that's a little a internship kind right. of thing. Yeah. Well, for coding. So she's got like, yeah. She's got an interest in it. She's getting really good at it. And we've like powwowed, sat down, and we gave her a list of like oh, things yeah. that we wanted on it. But we kind of gave her carte blanche to what's the next generation want to see in yeah, a website? What, what is going like? What's a good marketing? Like, mm -hmm. what do you think your generation and from your age up want to see? And yeah. she gave us a really like it was a nice, fresh kind of like mindset and yeah. like focus of how, where we want this to go and kind of take off. Like what demographic do we want to work with? You mm -hmm. know, we want to do more nonprofit stuff. Are we doing more, you know, private parties? It was like a little bit, it was really cool that she already had like the questions yeah, in mind, she right? She already knew like, Ooh, she, she answered this questions this. that we didn't even think to ask. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like we started with like a new FAQ, like the previous mm -hmm. website, we didn't have those like frequently asked questions. Yeah. Right. We didn't have, all these different like questionnaires like well what drives you to want to you mm -hmm. know do art or you know I thought I could actually give you a little tip but I have it here yeah no I'm but curious to hear what the the uh, back and forth was that's why I have her she keeps all the notes I do <laughs> <laughs> oh it's like, more than mine I gave like a one of these things like a short statement yeah. for people who want to like take our classes whether it's a child an adult or want private lessons want to do plain air or private party I had like, you know, you put your name here, artist statement. It's like write a short statement about the importance of art in your life. If there is any, or, you know, if you, what makes you want to have that importance. So I was like, here's a couple ways you can be begin. Art can be my inspiration comes from, you know, mm -hmm. just like finding out what is making people want to draw or paint and right. what inspires them and just really trying to, again, personalize it. Like I... Yeah. I'm really all about, you know, getting that personal relationship with that person, building that rapport, whether they're a first time client or existing, it's just taking classes or the party. I want to make them feel like special, mm -hmm. you know, so really we try to make it more personalized on the website too, for all, all the different um, things that we offer, questions, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? And it, it, are they going to be able to uh, book classes on the website? Are you looking to integrate yeah. that more in there? Okay. Yeah. Yes. We needed a calendar. We looked at the old website and uh, just made notes. And she actually, she did such a good job, didn't she? It's streamlined. Michaela. <laughs> so she just looked at our website and made the notes of what, was good about it and what was like eh, lacking and uh, like I said I gave her carte blanche as far as like what's the next generation gonna do right show me do it because we're not tech savvy right and that's the reason that you hire someone to do a website you, you yeah. don't hire them to go they sit there and it's like okay now let me walk you don't want to hold on to their hand on top of the mouse and go okay we're gonna move this here and move this here no you want them to do it for you yeah of course yeah. <laughs> and honestly it's worked so much better that way like mm -hmm. we told her we like did all the time, spent all the hours putting all the content, you know, projects that she's done previously over the years with the business, things that I've integrated into it, my own personal work that I've yeah. done, and then like stuff we do within our classes, private parties. So it's nice that it's all categorized and then, you know, we have all our events listed, public events that we're going to be a part of, whether yeah. that's stuff, community, private parties, it's all of our scheduled classes. It's nice and it gives the person, again, that personalization. They can go and, and click on and, it. And, and click on it and customize it and it's direct and it comes right to us. We can mm -hmm. have that personal, almost like I am kind of interaction with them, yeah. which is nice. So that's a new addition mm -hmm. is having that little messaging board mm -hmm. so we can have that, whether if it's just email or that kind of messaging board through the website. Yeah studio line. There's a lot of forms of communication that we offer. Wait, a phone? What? Who talks on the phone? Oh, no. no. <laughs> Still have a landline. <laughs> Do you really? Nice. I love it. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't give up my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> I 
get enough we spam. Can choose. That's true. For a business, you would want to have a landline. You wouldn't want it to be the cell phone because then who knows who's calling you at what hours of the night. You need to have that answering machine that can deal with it. So what kind of things do you have coming up both uh, personally art, uh, as artists or um, even just with the business itself? Like what, what are some things coming up that people could look into? Oh, well, um, I'm still doing portraits. Okay. I'm, so I've been working on baby portraits lately. and uh, Now, when you general- say baby portraits, you mean portraits of babies, not like little tiny yeah. portraits. No, not naked portraits. Okay. <laughs> All right. Big. Like that big. <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I've been, that kind of has been my therapy because I love to do portraiture. So I've been doing those when I can. Again, the Friendship Fridays have been a big hit. We've been like booking those like crazy. Once we started yeah. advertising that, and it's either like a Friday or Saturday, we have a couple events um, booked in August that are private. But then, you know, right now I just I have um, um I got two um, publishing gigs um, for a friend of mine who's um, a writer. Mm. I just actually got the rewrites today. This is news that I haven't even yeah. gotten to share with you. Oh. I'll be um, illustrating two books. Two children's books. Oh, cool! Um, designing tattoos. I have two big commission jobs for my one client who kept me busy through the pandemic. I have like a five foot five foot mural I'm gonna do. Um, it's a lot. Like you know, again, we do still. We're offering plain air to do these like excursions mm-hmm. to go out. We have so many um, beautiful locations near us, and yeah. and that can be scheduled. You know, privately, or we do group um, group excursions as mm-hmm. well. Do you have to do permits for those plein air things, by the way? I'm curious, or can you just show up and like, they won't say anything? Uh, it depends on the depends location. On the location okay. and how many people are involved. So mm-hmm. if, like, if it's a huge setup of more than 10 people, okay. you, do. You, need a par- you, know, you need to ask the park if you go there. Okay. Um, but generally, um, I haven't had any issues taking people out. I wouldn't paint. think. I don't think anybody's <laughs> going to walk along and go, hey, you can't do that here. But you never yeah. know. <laughs> No, no, it's true. But we try to keep that, um, you know, it's, you know, t- if you bring it in, yeah. take it out. Mm-hmm. Well, and with the plain air sense, it does, it's more personalized. It's really one-on-one mm-hmm. and, you know, you're painting what's around you. So like doing landscapes like that can be a lot more difficult for most people. Right. So it's a higher cost that we charge as well because mm-hmm. it is so personalized. It's yeah. three hours that we dedicate to Minimum. working, yeah, working Usually hands ends up being the day. It, it does end up being the day, but it like yeah. it typically starts at you know the three hour range. But but we're really hands on with that, and it's mm-hmm. it's nice because we only normally have a couple people because it's more personalized like that. Mm-hmm. It's it's really that that. And that same means. with like anatomy, we're going to introduce anatomy and portraiture yeah. as oh. well, and that's so private. Um, because it's, you know, we'll get a model or a student to come in and sit and then they could practice painting live models. So that'll be what we're going to start yeah. introducing. Which in is August. nice because around near us, there isn't, unless you're going into New York City, yeah. there's very few places that offer live model um, sitting, sittings and drawing classes. So that's something that we have a following for that people are really interested in or okay. are looking to do. So trying to integrate that into more into our curriculum because more people, there's more people interested in it. So, and the lettering and the lettering. Right. Well, and if people wanted to check out this stuff and the stuff that you do personally, where would you say that people should go? Um, well right now, once the website should be up and like really running the new website Mm -hmm. within the next like week or two, which is nice be artnasanas.com um, or our personal social media pages, whether that's we have our page on Facebook, always has up-to-date events and bookings and pricings or our in- either of our um, business Instagrams. Yeah, whether it's Artnasanas, Linda Edward Arts, my Kate Leo Designs. Mm-hmm. We try to keep it pretty consistent. At least once a week we're posting yeah. something to stay, you know, within that algorithm, keeping us out there. Right. So. Well, I'm so glad that I got to talk with you guys today. It was great seeing you again too, Linda, by the way. (laughs) Thank you both for for doing this. It was great talking with you and finding out more about what's been happening since the last time. Thank you for having us.